so in today's video we'll be learning how to construct the curve of statical stability using information from the cross curves of statical stability uh, to do so i'll take up an example of a question here and while we solve the question uh, the solution will teach you guys uh, how to draw the curve of statical stability so in my previous video i discussed the theory of the curve of statical stability which is a very important curve for chief officers to assess the stability of the ship before sailing out from the port uh, so these curves of course can be these days if you input the data you can uh, obtain these curves uh, through an automatic generation of the loadicator but uh, for practical purposes uh, and before you guys become chief officers you should know how to draw these curves manually all right so let's start with uh, today's uh, topic and the today's topic is cross curves of statical stability the question says that you have to construct the curve of statical stability uh, which is constructed for various uh, gz or writing lever against the angle of heel all right and uh, the curve has to be drawn for a vessel with a displacement 70000 tons uh, kg solid 9.41 meters free surface moment of 6300 tons meter and once you draw the curve from the curve you have to find the maximum gz that is the maximum amount value of the writing lever and the angle of heel at which the maximum gz occurs so i'll start with the solution so the first thing that you do is using the free surface moment and the displacement given to you in the question find out the free surface correction so of course i'm sure you guys know what free surface moment is free surface moment is created from all uh, tanks where the uh, tanks which are not full which are partially filled uh, and the liquid is or the or the water in the tank or the oil in the tank is free to slosh about because of this movement there is a virtual loss in the metacentric height or the gm that is the free surface correction all right so to find the free surface correction which is like the value of the virtual loss of the gm you would will divide free surface moment given to you in the question by the displacement also given to you in the question so which is 6300 divided by 70000 and you obtain the free surface correction as 0 0.09 meters all right uh, now kg fluid kg fluid will be the kg that we'll be using in the question but given to us is kg solid so kg solid is 9.41 meters so kg fluid is equal to kg solid plus free surface correction all right so therefore kg fluid as denoted by kg and a f as an under note is equal to 9.41 as given to us in the question is this is kg solid plus the free surface correction of 0 0.09 meters that we have calculated so we find out that kg fluid is 9.50 meters now why all this is important because uh, uh, there is a kg which is given to us and I'll show you what is this kg the kg for which the statical curves are made for this vessel so if I go out and I show you the cross curves of stability here so you can see that the cross in the cross curves of stability uh, the, the the cross curves of stability was made for an assumed kg of 10 meters as you can see here, right so this is the assumed kg uh, that was assumed for the uh, construction of the cross curves of stability from which we need to obtain uh, information to make the curve of statical stability now the assumed kg for making the cross curves of stability is uh, denoted as kg with a small g equals to 10 meter and that is the assumed height of the center of gravity of the ship for which the cross curves were constructed however the kg fluid the kg fluid is the actual height of the center of the gravity of the voyage which is inclusive of the free surface correction so to make any curve uh, which is provided in the hydrostatic particulars of the ship and certain assumptions have to be made so it cannot assume for all conditions of loading or discharging so therefore the cross curves of stability which are provided in the hydrostatic particulars uh, are made for certain condition and we have to see what is the present condition of the ship and then interpret the information accordingly so i'll teach you guys how to do that all right so you see the difference between kg with a small g and kg with a capital g 
so kg with a small g is actually the assumed height of center of gravity for which the cross curves was made and kg with a capital g is the actual height of the center of gravity of the voyage which is inclusive also of the free surface correction all right so free surface correction will of course vary with based on the loading condition how much cargo you are carrying and how you adjust the ballast ideally we try to keep the tanks either fully empty or fully full uh, fully full uh, full to avoid any kind of uh, free surface moment but sometimes you are it is unavoidable and you have to um, sail with tanks which are partially full because of which the free surface correction occurs all right so let's see how this is important now if you look at this uh, figure here in this figure here the vessel is heeled to a certain angle denoted by angle theta all right this is the angle of heel now as soon as the vessel heels uh, the writing lever which is gz acts in to bring the vessel back upright so in this case the gz with a capital g and z is the actual writing lever at theta degrees of heel when the height of the cog is kg with a capital g that means the actual height of the cent center of gravity of the voyage all right but uh, there is also this gz here with the small g and a small z which is basically the writing lever at theta degrees of heel if the height of the cog was the assumed height of the cog which is kg with a small g which is equal to 10 meters all right so that is the difference so there is an assumed height of the center of gravity for which the cross curves were made and then there is the actual height of center of gravity and both because once the ship lists there is a writing lever that is created due to both of them all right now why this is important is because we have to apply a certain correction for the information that we will be getting from the cross curves of stability but that cross curves of stability were made for an assumed height of center of gravity of 10 meters but the one that you have calculated after applying the free surface correction is 9.5 meters so if you look at the drawing here you can see that gz all right which is the actual uh, writing lever is equal to xz plus xg now if you look at the figure here you can see that gz capital gz is equal to this is x okay so this is x xg which is this distance here and xz which is this distance here right now xz is also equal to gz so if you see this xz is also equal to gz this distance here so xz is replaced by gz the small g and small z okay i'll not keep repeating it you can see which is a small g and z and xg xg which you can see the distance here and i'll delete the rest of it so that you guys don't get confused all right xg that you can see here in the diagram if you think about it it's like a right angle triangle where this is the hypotenuse this is theta right now this becomes g and this becomes x and this is small g right so this xg which is this distance here can be written as so sine of theta will be equal to opposite upon hypotenuse right so opposite upon hypotenuse so, so the opposite is of course xg and the hypotenuse is gg so therefore xg is also equal to g g sine theta all right that's how so this is the correction that you have to apply when your when the vessel's assumed kg is greater than the actual kg of the ship then you add if it's the other way around you would have subtracted so if the actual kg was greater than the vessel's assumed kg then you would have subtracted this correction so that is the correction that you need to apply to the cross curves of stability to obtain the actual value of gz now why do we need gz because to make a curve of statical stability you need to have values of gz or writing levers for various angles of heel so therefore the information that you will get from the cross curves of stability that i will show you later you obtain the gz values and apply correction of gg sine theta to obtain the actual writing lever value now what is gg as you can see gg is the difference between the actual center of gravity and the assumed center of gravity so kg with a small g is 10 meters 
and kg with the big G is 9.5 meters. So in this case GG will be equal to 10 minus 9.5 which is equal to 0 0.5 meters. After that it's pretty simple. After that what you have to do is basically for the displacement of 70,000 tons you will take this value and go into the cross curves of stability over here you can see your displacement is here 70,000 tons you see 70 written here but this is in thousands of tons all right and then you see the angles of heel are given here so for each angle of heel go up from 70 all right and then draw a parallel line draw a parallel line here to get the value here all right so that was not a good job i did but i just trying to show you that to draw a parallel line here so if i have to draw a parallel line i will just put a scale parallel to the base of the curve all right and then for each angle of heel or for each curve i will just draw a parallel line all right so let me show you how so if you go up and then draw a parallel line all right so i'm my pen is not working right now so i need to draw this curve of statical stability so draw a parallel line here like that all right so then you can get the value so you do that for each of the values of the angle of heel all right and then you can get the gz values and to that gz so do that for 10 degrees 20 degrees 75 30 60 45 degrees all these values get the angle of fields so for each of this angle of field or theta for each of the curve get the gz value so start from zero degrees which was zero of course and apply the correction of gg sine theta where gg is of course 0 0.5 and sine theta is sine of zero so the same value over here will also be here theta is nothing but angle of field so the same value comes here as well all right so same value from here will come here as well in each case you will be adding these values of course and if you add these values you will see that you get the answer here this is the answer you should be getting so you are plotting the actual writing lever values for various angles of field all right so 0 0.5 by sine 0 is 0 so 0 plus 0 equals 0 so on and so forth hmm? once you get the actual values of the gz then all you have to do is plot it in a curve against the various angles of heel so to do so just have a look at the gz values see the minimum value which is zero so you always start from zero and the maximum value is about 3.484 if you can see so you need uh, on the gz axis value from zero to four because the maximum you can go is up to four right so on the gz axis go from zero to four and then of course the angles of heel is starting from 0 degrees then 10 20 30 then there is no 40 but there is 45 60 and 75 but you can plot it at every 10 degrees of angle of heel as you can see on the angle of heel axis i have plotted it on every 10 degrees all right so they should be equally spaced because you are making a curve to scale so both the gz axis and the angle of heel axis should be equal to scale so the x axis which is the horizontal axis and the y axis which is the vertical axis should be equally spaced uh, based on the scale all right once you do that against every angle of field plot the curve that plot the gz value so for example let's say for zero degrees the angle of heel or writing lever is zero so you start from the zero point here and then for 10 degrees it is 0 0.687 so go up from 10 degrees until you get 0 0.0687 here so say this is 0 0.0687 plot the first point here okay for 20 degrees is 1.551 so go up perpendicular from 120 degrees and go parallel from here so hopefully this is 1.551 so you get the idea so this is how you plot the points then join the points together and you get the curve all right make sure you give it a smooth turn when you're drawing the curve for example when you're joining the points and you are joining the curve give it a smooth turn like this all right so but make sure you're connecting all the dots you're connecting all the points that's how you should be drawing the curve you should be smoothening the curve 
but make sure that you're also joining all the curves right or joining all the points rather so for every angle of heel for which you have the gz values plot the gz values on the curve graph and then join the points together all right once you do that from the curve itself you can see that the maximum gz is occurring at this point here all right now remember that uh, based on how you draw the curve and how i have drawn the curve or your friend will draw the curve in the exam sometimes your answers will slightly differ don't stress about that that much allowance is of course allowed uh, we all will draw the curves differently our pencil thickness will be different so don't go exactly by my answer here uh, see your value should be close enough to this but not exactly not necessarily it's exactly at this so you can see the curves maximum value is reaching at the peak of the curve which in this case or in my case it's about 48 degrees angle of heel so this is happening and so when you reach plot the maximum value you can also see here the gz value is about 3.49 based on the scale that i've taken all right and for the initial gm draw a perpendicular from 57.3 degrees okay so draw this perpendicular go up draw this perpendicular and then draw a tangent to the curve at zero degrees angle of heel the red line here so wherever the tangent will cut the perpendicular line from 57.3 that is the value of the initial gm all right and that you can also read off from the graph here so this value will be 3.7 meters of initial gm so that is how you can use the curve of statical stability to obtain critical stability information as a chief officer before the ship sails out so before the ship sails out master will expect or the company will expect you to provide the gm value the gm should be positive and it should be a value there is no particular value but different ships like container ships cargo ships car carriers they all have different values of gm that they normally sail out with some ships like to sail out with low gm values some like to sail or some can sail with higher gm values but uh, gm values are mostly positive unless you are under some special circumstance of the case where you cannot avoid sailing with a negative gm but normally gms are positive that's the information you need you need to know uh, the uh, gm value and of course you need to know the curve of statical stability because that gives you the range of positive stability so all the way from zero gz when again the gz becomes zero is the range of positive stability so these are the information that you need from the cross curves of statical stability all right so i hope this was good enough if you let if you want me to solve any more questions in this regard let me know and i'm happy to do that for you uh, let me know what you thought about this videos through likes and comments and i'll see you soon with my next video uh, and study hard guys well done and keep subscribing so that you keep getting notification about my future videos bye